Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another edition of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer. And, you know, what does it mean to be board certified? It means that I have enough experience to be called an expert in the area or a specialist in the area of criminal law. And so I've taken in two exams. I've uh, been verified by four prosecutors, four judges, and four defense lawyers submitted a writing sample, and uh, and I've got enough trial experience to call myself an expert in the field. That's why, we, that's why we have experts. And when you have somebody that's board certified, you know that they're true, they're tested, and they are um, what they say they are. Anyway, uh, today we're reacting to Hip Hop Daily. And this is about uh, Chicago drill lyrics that really happen. So this is right up my alley about what we call Stop Self Snitching. Um, but before we get to that, remember what I said in some of our prior videos where if we come across a deal that uh, I think would be advantageous to uh, our subscribers, our listeners, um, I would, you know, I'd like to pass that on. And so we have another opportunity with Skillshare. So for the fir if you look at the link in the description, the first thousand subscribers that click the link will get a one month free membership to Skillshare. Now, let me tell you about Skillshare. I took a YouTube class uh, a couple months ago uh, by Marquez uh, Brownlee. And what that did, that gave me some more foundation as to you know, understanding how YouTube works. And it just gave me some more skills. And gave me, you know, one of the things that I like to do is I can always build on my knowledge. I don't rest until, um, in fact, I never rest. You know, don't rest. Because what are we doing? We're always building, 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 building. And that's what Skillshare does. It builds on uh, on your knowledge that you already have, but it gives you new skills. So if you have a passion for something, find it on Skillshare. If you want to learn a new skill or if you got a job coming up and you don't you want to do some writing, that's an excellent way to get some mastery of a particular skill. Right now I'm taking a course, Arthur Bird. It's a Ultimate Piano uh, Chords course. So I play a little piano, but I'm kind of okay. But I could use a little, I take it to the next level. You know what I mean? I, lo I have uh, a lot of passion for uh, piano. And so Skillshare is uh, taking me through this journey. And so as you build your life, Skillshare is an excellent way to do that. So with that said, uh, let's get into Chicago drill lyrics that really happened. Now, before I even press play, I'm already seeing on the screen a firearm. You know, you know my I, I get my um, my antenna goes up when I see the firearm because I always wonder, is that person holding that firearm eligible? And you know, is it a prop gun? So let's see what let's see what this is all about. I haven't seen it. Rapping about real crimes that happen in the streets, anything goes. Here's a look at some of the wildest drill there. See, look at these guys jumping around, uh, and and they, and they got guns, guns, guns. That really happened. Jizzle Bucks featuring King Von. What's next? A that told on me before, he got a longer sentence. I think they gave him 28. He rather talked than listen. It was the only one that told. They killed the other witness. So that fella told me before uh, he got a longer sentence. Uh, I think they gave him uh, 28. I would mean that 28 years. He rather talked than listen. Uh, bitch was the only one that told uh, they killed the other witness. That's cold. Before he was killed in November 2020, King Von was becoming one of the biggest names in hip hop. But while many of his homies was blowing up in the industry, Von was sitting in jail fighting the murder charge. In this bar, he's talking about his homie Big Mike, who snitched on him to the police, then got a longer sentence because he refused to testify in court. On May 29th, 2014, Vaughn went to a house party on the 5700 block of South LaSalle Street. A dude named Malcolm Stuckey was there and was supposedly giving Vaughn dirty looks when he walked in. In Chicago, me mugging a dude like King Vaughn can get you killed. So that's how crazy the drill scene is. Just by mugging somebody, you can get killed. Um, and here's the thing. By putting all this stuff out there, 
what you know i we had we did a thing on on gucci main and uh and he was talking about you know pay attention to your case don't pay attention you know don't be self snitching basically and that's what that's these guys become high profile and they wind up uh telling on themselves it ain't clear if he and bond had passed beef or if they just ain't like each other but bond wasn't feeling the energy see look at that he's got that gun pop 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 you know this is so it's just culture it is it is their own culture it's their own murderous murderous culture and um and i'm not criticizing it but i am criticizing it you know i mean i want these guys to just take their lives to a different place look at uh you know and i and i'll, I'll re reference gucci main and how how he uh has kind of come out the other side of prison uh, a changed person we think oh he left the party and got help from one of his homies big mike who was another bd from o block they came back to the party and saw stucky and two of his homies posted on the front porch a fight broke out and at one point Bon and Big Mike started shooting. So when these fights break out, it used to be, you know, people fought with their fists. They don't fight with their fists anymore. They fight with guns. And guess what? Guns don't know, um, you know, once the bullet leaves, it doesn't, you know, it goes in one direction and that's it. And it doesn't discriminate against a child, uh, against a mother, or against, you know, a sheetrock wall where on the other side there's some innocent. And so it's one thing to have these beef between these guys and these guys warring and killing themselves. It's quite another uh, to have the collateral damage. And how many times have we heard some, you know, 10-year-old little girl got shot or some uh, bystander got shot because these guys um, can't control their, their firearms? For no altercation, Stucky got killed and two others got wounded. A few weeks later, Vaughn and Big Mike got arrested and charged with one count of murder and two attempted murders and was both facing life in prison. Vaughn kept it solid and spent a few years behind bars fighting the case. But Big Mike folded and started cooperating with the police. When you fold and start cooperating with the police, that can be a problem. But sometimes guys think that they don't have any choice. You know, you look at the old days with the mob, the uh, Cosa Nostra, the Code of Silence. Um, well, how do you think John Gotti got taken down? He got taken down from the inside by Sammy the Bull. And the only way that happened is because they showed him uh, vi uh, video and audio of Gotti planning a hit on him. So there is no loyalty anywhere. He admitted he and Vaughn was the ones who shot up the party, but he told prosecutors it was Vaughn's idea and that he was the one who actually caught the body. So it was his idea. Bullshit. Case took over two years to go to trial. But when it finally came to testify, Big Mike ain't take the stand. He probably realized that being labeled a snitch was going to be rough, whether he beat the case or got sent to prison. So what happens when uh, something like that? So you talk to the cops. They can't use his out-of-court statements in Vaughn's trial because it's he, – he's, first of all, he's saying it was his fault, not mine, and he's pointing the finger at him. So – in order for them to use his testimony, he has to appear and testify at trial. Because he says, I'm not going to, there's no evidence against against King Vaughn. Or at least they can't use his evidence against him because it's what? Hearsay. Hearsay is a statement out of court made by the declarant offered to prove the matter asserted, the truth of the matter asserted. At the last minute, he refused to testify. No other witnesses came forward, and there wasn't enough evidence to convict Vaughn of the crime. So he got released, and Big Mike got hit with 28 years for the murder. So here's, here's why he got 28. And this was really stupid on his part, because he admitted, he admitted to the crime. And so when you are talking to the police, it, I don't know if this was a Fed case or a state case. It was probably a state case. But when you're talking to the police, there generally should be a proffer agreement, and meaning that they can't use anything against you as long as you're telling the truth. However, if, there, if he didn't have that agreement and he thought he was going to walk um, and all of a sudden he gets cold feet, 
Then all, all of a sudden, he, what has he done? He snitched on himself, and he fucked himself out of out of uh, out of any cooperation agreement. And so now he, he's taking the full brunt. Even though he ain't go through with it, Von still lost respect for Big Mike. Of course he did. He, of course he did because he initially spoke to the police and told them that it was his fault. Question: Why he even snitched in the first place? Stupid. That's why. The prosecutors had little evidence to bring a conviction without his testimony. So he probably would have gotten off if he stayed quiet. So here's the thing. It's really heady sitting in a jail cell. Sitting in that cinder block cell with the clanging doors and everything. And some guys can take it, some guys can't. Vaughn evidently could take it and he shut his mouth, which is, that's why he walked. And don't you think it's ironic? The one who tried to get cooperation all of a sudden didn't and then he got 28 years and and Vaughn walked I mean that probably tells you because there's another doctrine called corpus delecti you can't be convicted on your own word alone but there was enough evidence to corroborate what he said in order for them to use his own statement just silly ain't the only one who raps about real events this next rapper talks about how he caught an op at a mall in Atlanta T.T. Cop at a, uh, co- catching a body at a mall in Atlanta. Two very specific things. Hey, day and THFTP catch a op. I catch a op in Lennox, made that boy run for a minute. TTE Day Day is a rapper from Taytown who's affiliated with OTF and Lil Dirk. So that last line when he says, I made him run for a minute, what does that tell you? That tells you he's shooting him in the back. In this bar, he's talking about a situation where he punched another rapper named FBG Cash at Lennox Mall in Atlanta. FBG Cash is a rapper from the Flyboy Gang, which was formed by FBG Duck, who was one of Dirk's main ops before he got killed in 2020. And we know, or at least we uh, can surmise, and it's in one of his latest uh, uh, videos where he talks about paying for that body. TTE Day Day was shopping in Atlanta one day when he saw FBG Cash in the mall doing the same thing. The fight was captured on video and quickly went viral after it was posted. In the video, Cash is standing in the middle of the mall listening to a fan spit a freestyle for him. Out of nowhere, someone runs up from behind and punches him in the head. He then... For what? Why would you do that? ...runs up with the dude that hit him, but the video ends before showing what happened next. After the incident, Cash posted a clip of the fight on the social media with the caption, like 20 pushed up on me in Lennox Mall today, right after I left the jewelry store. Why they running though? They ain't run my pockets, 6K and I still got my chain. More of the story is, y'all too little. So this taunting, this taunting is, is runs rampant. That's what, that's what drill music really is. It's, you know, fuck you, no, fuck you, no, fuck you, no, fuck you. And, uh, and there's just, I, I don't see an end to it. And, but the taunting does not, it just says flexing, you know? And, and really, what is flexing? Flexing is insecurity. I was supposed to the video to prove he still had the chain. TTE Day Day later went on live and took credit for being the one who ran. Look at that. TTE Day Day, um, he's got this uh, ruler and uh, social media is, I, I, I had this, case not that long ago where these these young guys are you know they carjack these guys and, and they they think they're cool because they're in these you know fancy cars that they just carjacked and they put it all over fucking snapchat you, you make the cops job easy fbg cash he also dropped a diss track doubling down on the disrespect but he did kind of cheap shot cash then backed up when he tried to fight for real so it's hard to give him the w in that situation but if you thought that was wild, this next rapper dissed the ops for killing an innocent person over a coat. TB in the cut, and Poppy from TW, and Richie Jerk, Taekwon Way. F- the ops, they be killing for coats. TB in the cut, also known as just TB, was a rapper from Taekwon World. A set- See, you watch these, these videos in the background, and it's guns, 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 weed, 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 and other drugs that we've seen. Gangsta Disciples. Taekwon World beats with other BD sets like O Block, 600, and Front Street. This bar is aimed at members of Front Street who allegedly killed a 15 year old during a random lick. On December 13, 2014, twins Demario and Demacio Bailey was going to school for basketball practice. 
They got off the bus at 63rd and State Street and headed in the direction of the school. But as they was walking under a bridge, they got stopped by four teens. They demanded the twins to give them anything they had and try to steal Demacio's coat. So, you know, the, the age of these violent crimes is getting younger and younger, it seems. And all for what? They're going to trade their life. They're going to trade their life for some very cheap material bullshit. And then end the lives of two young guys. Mario tried to defend his brother, and they both started fighting back. But one of the dudes fired a gun, hitting Demario in the chest. Four suspects later got arrested for the murder, including three 17-year-olds. 17 years old. Bye bye I mean, come on. You know, here, if you're 17 years old and watching this, take a lesson from this. If you're a rapper, take a lesson from this shit. Keep yourself insulated from, uh, from the violence, because we don't want to see you killed. And keep yourself insulated from the crime, because we don't want to see you go to, away to prison. We want to hear your shit. A 15-year-old. According to police, the teens already robbed two other people at gunpoint for cash and cell phones. Allegedly, three out of the four of them was from Front Street. Just because you grow, and I know it's hard for some guys, I know it's hard for some guys, but just because you grow up in, in you know, a shitty area without parents, you can pull yourself up. I've seen it happen. I've seen all kinds of guys. I had a client who was from Cabrini Green, and he pulled himself up, and he was a, he was a uh, engineer. And this guy, I just he committed the weirdest crime. He would go into uh, lockers at the health club, steal people's credit cards, and he'd go buy stuff at the store, like kid stuff. And then he'd go back to his neighborhood, and he'd give uh, give it away like he was uh, Robin Hood or Santa Claus. And he got busted because when you use somebody's credit card, there's there's a digital footprint and usually a, a picture of you doing it. Um, but there's no reason you can't become an engineer or a lawyer or a doctor. There's absolutely no reason. Every single fucking one of you guys can be whatever you want to be. And the more you have to build, the more you have uh, you know, to protect, the better decisions you make. And you won't make decisions like sticking somebody up for a fucking coat. If they're the twins was from a gang, but they grew up in the South Side. So in this bar, TB is dissing his ops for targeting random people and taking a life over a coat. But if you thought that was crazy, this next rapper took shots at his ops for running off on him after one of their homies got shot. Billionaire Black, crazy story, last chapter, King Von diss. My homies ran on me, swear I seen them by the door. Billionaire Black is a rapper associated with the Flyboy Gang, AKA FBG. He's also from a BD set called Welsh World, but mostly grew up around GDs, so he's considered an insane BD because he beefs with other BD sets. His most public beef is with O-Block and 600 because of his affiliation with FBG Duck. In this song, Billionaire Black is taking shots at King Von's homies for running away after he got shot. On November 6, 2020, King Von and his homies went to the Monica Hookah Lounge in Atlanta, Georgia, where they ran into Quando Rondo and his crew. Quando and Von was beefing over a situation with NBA Youngboy, who Quando assigned to. So, when they saw each other, it was on sight. Von went up to Quando and... And we've got a reaction to this. Remember this? And, and Lil Tim is on the hook for this. And, uh, and, and it's, this is going to come down to a gang thing. Whether he reasonably feared for his life. And, uh, and you know, all somebody's going to do, honestly, to, to win Lil Tim's case is to show the history of violence and show you know the propensity and what they reasonably uh feared and uh and that there was no reasonable way to retreat unless i don't know if uh georgia is a stay in your ground state or not but if fight breaks out you probably know everybody's fucking packing and if everybody's packing heat um you really need to you know shoot or get shot right i'm in the face but Quando's homie Lil Tim pulled out his burner and started shooting. When this happened, all of Vaughn's homies ran except Slutty and Muwap. Muwap is one of Vaughn's day ones, and they were seen together often on social media when Vaughn was alive. Muwap was also one of the O Block members who got arrested for killing FBG Duck. The video footage from outside the hookah lounge shows Muwap running up to Vaughn after he got shot, even though Lil Tim was still right in front of him with a gun. Slutty was another one of Vaughn's close homies. He was the brother of T Roy, one of Vaughn's day ones. Slutty also got shot that night and lost his life. But 
it's just too much violence. I mean, and 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 these guys are making constant drill, and, and they're and they're openly discussing what they're doing. I mean, listen to NBA young boy. You know, you saw that thing that I showed you a while back, where he spells out, uh, "You fellas gonna die." Didn't say fellas, but that's what I'm gonna say. He said, "You fellas gonna die," and while he's on supervised release, he, he puts that out there, and. And what does the little jerk do? He puts he puts out there, uh, y'all better hurry your ass up. This bar, billionaire black, is dissing the rest of Vaughn's homies for running away after he got shot instead of fighting. Many of them ran and hid in the doorway of the hookah lounge to avoid getting shot. But some were fired back because Lil' Tim got shot multiple times and was brought to the hospital before being arrested for murder. If you thought that was wild, this next rapper talked about two brothers who got chipped the same way three years apart. Tay 600 and S Dot with the shits. Lil Mark and Shondell, they got killed in the same way. Bus Stop Brothers. Tay 600 and S Dot are two rappers from the 600 set of the Black Disciples. 600 beats with the STL EBT. See, look at all these guns. And here's the thing these disses, 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 disses. All, all it does is just elevate, 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 and exacerbate the situation. Set of the GDs and the 051 Young Money set of the Mickey Cobras. In this bar, Tay 600 is taking shot at two brothers who was killed while waiting for a bus three years apart. Shondell Gregory, aka Tuka, was a 15-year-old STL EPT member. On January 12, 2011, Tuka was waiting at a bus stop when a car pulled up in front of him. A passenger hopped out and exchanged a few words with him before shooting him multiple times. And that's why that's where we get Tukaville from. Tuka was pronounced dead at the scene when police arrived. Tuka was a well-loved member of STL EBT. After his death, the gang took on the name Tukaville in his honor. Tuka's killers never got caught, but many think his death was payback for the murder of a BD named Edric Walker, who was rumored to be killed by the GDs. Tuka's death was a major event in the war between the BDs from 600 and No Block and the GDs from STL EBT. After that, BD members like Chief Keith started talking about smoking Tuka, which just added to the act of war between the two gangs. A few months later, a high-ranking BD member named Odie Perry got killed. Many believe he was killed by K.I., a female shooter from STL EBT, who was close to Tuka. See, we've, we've did, when we did, we did kind of a whole thing on, on the old block a while back, and this is kind of reliving a lot of that history. And guess what? And that was a while ago. That was, I think it was 2012 or something like that. And so that's almost 10 years ago. And how many bodies, how many fucking bodies have gone to the morgue since then? After that, the BDs in Parkway Gardens started going by the name O-Block to honor OD, and the two gangs been beefing ever since. Mark Campbell, aka Lil Mark, was Tuka's brother. He was from 051 Young Money Gang, a set of the Mickey Cobras. On March 25th, 2014, Lil Mark dropped a remix of Lil Durk's song, Competition, called No Competition, where he took shots at some dead 600 and OTF members. Even though 051 was heavy in the streets, at that time, the BDs had all the rappers. This was the first time a rapper from 051 Young Money went viral for a diss track aimed at the BDs, so it got a lot of attention in the city. But not all attention is good attention, especially in a city like Chicago. Just three days later, on March 28, Lil Mark got killed while standing at a bus stop, just like his brother Tuka. He gets killed just by sitting at a bus stop. Um... You know, and, and when you think about all these killings that we're talking about, you've got mothers, you've got brothers and sisters and fathers and, you know, family members that are grieving. I mean, how many people have to grieve before this stuff ends? On 1.30 p.m., a van pulled up at the bus stop and started firing, shattering the glass. BD members later took pics and shot music videos near that same bus stop as a way to diss their ops, including Lil Dirt. Now that's cold. Some think this was the reason Dirk's cousin, Nooski, and his manager, Chino, got killed by one of 051's main shooters, 051 Melly. But rappers from 600 and O-Block have continued dissing Tuka and Lil Mark in songs, making them two of the most disrespected gang members in rap history. But the BDs ain't the only ones who dissed their dead ops. This next rapper took shots at members from NLMB and O-Block. So, you know, that, that's one of the things that... Um you know, being as disrespectful as you possibly can be to your op and, you know, smoking on Tuca and, you know, like um, who I smoke, you know, I mean, 
it's just it's in every city it's in every every damn city fybj main 300 dead ops kobe got his ass clapped j money took a headshot fybj main is a rapper from draw city and even though they uh you know uh, what's his name uh, jay-z and some other people are trying to uh pursue legislation that would uh you know prevent uh people from uh using rap lyrics in a criminal trial if they're talking about real events like this it's relevant and it's coming in there isn't any legislation that's going to protect you i mean look at these guys <laughs> they're they're got they got firearms like and i you know i i i posted something the other day i probably shouldn't have but on one of the artists page he's just you know guns 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 right and i just said look if you want to shoot join the army i mean i just wish these guys would do something a little less violent an insane bd and was cool with gds like fbg duck and beef with 600 and o block in this bar fybj may take shots at nlmb and 600 members no limit muskegon boys aka nlmb is a set made up of renegade gds and black peace stones NLMB's most famous members are G Herbo and Lil Bibby. In this bar, FYBJ Main is taking shots at one of G Herbo's day one homies, Kobe. Jacoby Heron, aka Kobe, was killed back in 2013 after leaving a party for Lil Bibby's brother's birthday. They was all posted on the block, shooting dice, when Kobe decided to leave. A few minutes after he left, they heard gunshots and ran down the block to find Kobe dead on the sidewalk outside of McDonald's. It's not clear who killed Kobe, but many think he was a casualty in the war between NLMB and their main ops, a GD set called Kill to Survive or KTS. Jay Money's an O-Block member. Um, what is the name of your club? Uh, KTS. Well, what does that stand for? Uh, Killer to Survive. Okay, guilty. See you later. I mean, man, I tell you. For that weekend of 2013, he was well-respected and was considered one of O-Block's top shooters. Supposedly, he was killed after being set up by a female who convinced him to come to Draw City's hood. She told him to come to the 6600 block of South Rose Avenue. But when he got to the house, he saw two ops waiting for him. He tried to run away. So if you're set up by somebody, that woman who did that, um, if she's setting him up, she's just as guilty as if she pulled the trigger and she could be looking at life. Fast enough and ended up getting shot four times. No one ever got arrested for J Money's murder, but it's rumored to be a member from STL EBT. That was Chicago Drill lyrics that really happened by Hip Hop Daily. I thought it was a really good recitation of uh, the history of some of these guys getting on uh, social media, getting on, you know, with their videos and self snitching. Um, and what it does also, it highlights how violent the scene is. So we need to do whatever we can and I know it's a it's a tall order but you know what it I'm gonna spread the message that we should be more peaceful these guys should try to find some common ground somewhere they should I, I know it's like you kill my brother fuck you I'm gonna kill you I get it I get it you diss my op or you diss not my op but you you diss me you're my op and whatever there's gotta be a better way people have some goodness in them and there's got to be a better way forward because there are little kids that are growing up right now wanting to be gds bds stks whatever you know and we and we gotta get these kids somewhere safe so these are just a few of my thoughts and i'm pleading with people to quit shooting each other but if you're gonna shoot i guess don't miss so this is Bruce Rivers, Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Um, I am a board-certified criminal defense lawyer, reacting to news of the day and stuff like uh, Hip Hop Daily, which I think he does a really good job. So go ahead and uh, go over to his page and, and give him a like and a follow or subscribe, whatever. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts.